Hello, this is Inside the Press Box with Sunil Sundaraj with Everyday Fan Sports. Uh, today, I'm happy to be speaking with Paul Franzoni, NGIT Highlanders baseball graduate student and catcher. Once again, Paul, thank you so much for taking some time out to speak with me today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to, to talk to you. Okay, Paul, um, just over 48 hours away from uh, the home opener, you know, versus uh, the University of Hartford at, at King University. Uh, as we talked before we came on there, under the lights there at 7.30 p.m. Uh, I'm sure you guys are very excited, you and the rest of the team. It's been a, a what, a 12-game road trip to, to open up this season and, um, you know, to be back home in New Jersey uh, uh, to open up uh, the 2020, uh, 2022 season, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we can't express how excited we are just uh, to get back on the home field at Keene. And uh, just to really start conference play, um, this is this is what you really play for. This is where it counts. And uh, we've had a great, re uh, a great week of preparation, uh, just getting ready. And, and all the guys, yeah, are ready to go, ready to compete. So, Okay, I have to ask you, Paul, I mean, you had many stops along the way to open up this season. So I had to ask you about the experiences. Uh, you know, this is, uh, you talk about a group, you know, coming back here, I think there are 17 upperclassmen on this team. Uh, just talk about, you know, the start to this season. Yeah, so uh, obviously first weekend, get out to a two-and-one start, um, play, play, play some really good baseball against some good teams, and then uh, pl play a tough little slate, five straight against ACC opponents, mm -hmm. uh, play Virginia well, and then Wake Forest hit the ball well against us. Uh, it was definitely a good experience, though, just to, to see where we need to be to compete uh, on that level later in the season. Uh, we weren't there yet, uh, week week two, whatever it was, but uh, we, we know that we'll get there. Um, last year's a testament to just how how if you keep building and building and building, you'll be in a good spot at the end of the year. Um, so that, that weekend was a good learning experience. Um, and then Villanova last weekend, uh, unfortunately, the snow took a game away from us, yeah. but we get the split there. We would have liked to have won two on, um, on Saturday, on Friday, the position that we were in, but um, yeah, the, the big thing that I've learned in my five years about the first couple of weeks of the season before conference play is you just got to figure out the, the right nine guys that are going to be on the field and just everyone needs to come together and play together and kind of iron out some of the, the, the things you need to work on. And, and then you, you get ready for conference play. And that's that's where it really counts. Yeah, no doubt about it. OK, um, let's just talk about, uh, you know, you personally, Paul, hitting over 300, 13 hits, I think second on the team. Uh, you know, playing, you know, said the catching position as well as DHing. Uh, talk about this uh, pitching staff as well, uh, uh, Paul. Yeah, no, just uh, just trying to do whatever I can to, to help us win. Um, this year, I've, I've been, been stealing a couple more bases, uh, trying to get that into my game, getting some bunt hits. So just really doing whatever I can to help us win and whatever the, the, the situation is. But as far as the pitching staff goes, I think the guys have done a really good job to this point. Like I said, um, I think some of some of the guys' stats are a little inflated right now. I mean, we're 12 games in, but had a tough weekend against Wake Forest, some of the guys. But um, everyone's been doing great. Uh, Grant Verpilot, obviously, Verpier, excuse me, won the America East Pitcher of the Week uh, in our weekend against Norfolk State. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan Fisher is Ryan Fisher. Jake Rappaport at the end of the pen. Um, Aiden Kidd, Croy Jenkins, Joe Giorgini. Uh, and the the big part, the big piece that has really stuck out to me has been uh, Evan Gigekis so far this year. He's been, he's been lights out in his appearances, except for I think maybe one. Um, but his his stuff has been electric, and and he's going to be a huge piece for us at the end of the at the end of the bullpen. So it's it's been great to see that because his stuff is is could be the best on the team. It's great. Hey, you know we talked about the upper class. You know, I'm just wondering with the uh, underclassmen, like you know some of the freshmen and sophomores, like some you know you know players that have really stood out and impressed you so far, uh, Paul. Yeah, so so one of the the underclassmen that's taken a huge jump this year has been Aiden Kidd. Um, obviously, last year um, didn't didn't pitch much out of the bullpen. I felt like last year Rap was, yeah. <laughs> Rap and Croy Jenkins were the only guys that pitched out of the bullpen. Yeah. But uh, kind of took a year last year to to, to learn and, and to improve, um, and and jumped into a starting role this year and and is a weekend starter. So he's going to be a huge piece. Another guy that's kind of jumped out to me has been Aaron Park. Um, he's came in and had some really good outings. Um, he's, he's up to up in the upper eighties, low nineties with a, with a, with a hard sinker, mm -hmm. um, fills up the zone. So he's, he's, he's been looking really good. So, I mean, those guys have, have really stood out to me. Uh, let, let's just switch to the starting lineup. I mean, there, again, a lot of guys coming back this year and you, you already can see, you know, the production is, is right up there. Uh, and I'm sure once we get into conference play here in the Merrick East, 
the numbers are going to, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, increase, you know, tenfold. Just, just talk about this uh, starting lineup and just how, how dynamic, you know, it is or already is. And um, it could be, you know, as I said, once we get into uh, uh, the America East, Paul. Yeah, so so as, as far as our lineup goes, a lot of guys that have had a lot of experience, um, as you know, just miss, missing a couple guys from last year, Matt Cacciaferro, Kevin Blum. But mm -hmm. other than that, we really have the the entire lineup back that led the America East last year in um, almost all statistical categories during conference play. So uh, we're looking to do that uh, again this year. Um, we're, we're off to a bit of a slower start than we would have liked offensively, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that is what it is. We know the type of offense that we have. Uh, Coach Giuseppe Papaccio, Matt Greeley, uh, really just get us ready during the week. So, so we know that, that offensively we're going to swing it uh, at the top of the conference. And, yeah, I mean, can speak about any guys in our lineup. Obviously, Julio and David yeah. at the top. Got Albert Choi, uh, the, the reigning rookie of the year. Luke Longo. Um, Isaiah Dubon, grad transfer, Andrew Elcock, just, I could go on and on and on. Jared Donnelly's off to a really good start. Nick mm -hmm. Hussey's off to a really good start. Um, so that, that's one thing that we feel like we have is a lot of depth in our lineup. You can plug a lot of guys into different spots. And, um, I think once this comp, once conference play starts, we're really going to hit our stride offensively. And, uh, that's, that's kind of was the story last year when we got into conference play, we, we, we really started swinging the bats really well. It's great. You know, I, I was learning, Paul, that, um, again, being a graduate student, uh, I know there are a bunch of them and seniors as well. But those road trips are special. I mean, you know, when you get to experience different parts of the country, as you did last year, of course, with the NCAA tournament being down in Arkansas. But just talk about how, how cool that is, you know, to, you know, on this, you know, this final ride here. No, it's awesome. One thing that I'm, I'm trying to do in year five is just kind of cherish every moment, whether it's a 10 hour bus ride or, or a 6 a.m. lift to 7 a.m. practice because uh, this is going to be the last ride for me here. Yeah. So just trying to take in every moment. And um, this has been this has been the best experience of my life here at NJIT. So uh, I love my teammates. I love my coaches. And just trying just trying to soak it all in for for this last ride and, and win a ton of baseball games because we have the definitely have the talent and the team to, yeah. to do exactly what we did last year and take it even further. So yeah, no, definitely. Hey, I, I'm so impressed. Um you know, by your numbers and just your durability, you know, see year after year. I mean, the fact last year, what, 45 games, you know, you played in 44 starts, whether it was, you know, it was a catcher or a DH, um, and especially some memorable moments. So about hitting that home run, you know, the Americans tournament against Albany and then even against Nebraska and the NCAA tournament. Uh, when you look back on uh, 2021, uh, just what comes to your mind, uh, Paul? Uh, um, th thank you very much. And just when I look back on 2021, it's just uh, just a lot of hard work coming to fruition. Um, yeah. My class and, and and the guys before us have just had laid tried to lay a foundation for success, and and we feel like we we've, we've worked really hard since we've gotten on campus. So that was just kind of just that hard work just paying off. And and there's I mean I could go on and on all day for yeah. for all the memories from last year, but but we're looking to we're looking to turn the page on that and just and and do more this year. We're 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 really hungry to to continue that legacy. Well, it's not easy. I mean, making that uh, transition, that adjustment from the East Sun to the America East. And the fact that in your, you know, the team in its first season, the America East, again, was able to, you know, catapult and, you know, I said, uh, you know, win that conference tournament. And then, you know, again, proceed on to the NCAA regionals. Just talking about, I mean, how, I mean, because it's not, again, easy for a program to do that, but, you know, you guys, again, had the tools, you had the experience and, you know, great coaching staff in place as well, uh, Paul. Yeah, no, definitely. We, um, we, us older guys felt like the the ASUN, uh prepared us really, really well for the America East. Just um, with the the caliber of baseball that was played in that conference that we were exposed to, um, especially from a young age. A lot of us have been playing since since our freshman year, so we've kind of were thrown into the fire at that point and into a really, really good baseball conference. Um, and kind of had to, to figure it out how to compete at that level, and and not only the success that we we had at that level, but also some of the failures. Uh, I think got us ready really well for for what we have now in the America East, and I think the America East again is another great baseball conference. There's a lot of a lot of teams that that can compete on a national level, and uh, we're we're just lucky to be a part of a good conference and and play a high level of baseball. Yeah, no, I agree. Hey, I wanted to uh, talk about go back to use that. Um, you know, in terms of the strength and conditioning, you know, uh, preparing for a season and, you know, especially this fifth season, you know, uh, you know, because there, there's a lot of work. I mean, it's 24, 7, 365 polls. We know it. So I'm just wondering what you've been able to do, you know, to just, you know, certain, you know, methods, just incorporating that into your game as well. 
Yeah, uh, our, our coach, Bobby Fisk, here at NJIT does an unbelievable job getting us all ready, getting us uh, um, just in shape for the season. And also, like you said, durable to play 50, 60, whatever games uh, during the year. And he also does a great job developing us as athletes. Like, I know that a lot of guys, since they've stepped on campus, have gotten a lot faster, a lot stronger, um, and more explosive. I mean, I know that for, for myself personally, he's he's helped me out in all of those aspects in a huge amount. And he does a really good job just structuring our workouts, especially during the season, just to just keep you strong and to maintain that strength. And then he just, I think he does a great job. And that's that's why so many of our guys are able to, to play so many games every year because of the way that he prepares us in the off season. And then the way he's able to uh, keep our bodies strong and functional during the season. It's great. And, you know, something popped into my head in terms of putting that number seven jersey on, you know, wearing the NJIT jersey, what that, you know, has represented to you, uh, Paul, and especially, again, as we talked about, you know, you know, this uh, final season, you know, just, you know, every time, you know, either you go to step out to the plate or you're behind, you know, said, uh, you know, home plate, just had to get your, uh, your take on that. Yeah, it, it means everything. I, I like, I, I truly, I truly love NJIT. Um, Robbie McClellan gave me gave me an opportunity to play Division One baseball, and I, and ever since that, I've just wanted to to help him in, in any way possible because he believed in me and gave me this opportunity. So, just putting putting this jersey on just means everything to me. And and like I said, when my class got on the campus, we really we really got together and said that we wanna we wanna leave a legacy here, like a legacy here. We wanna change the culture, and and that's why we just put a high. Just winning is the most important thing to us. So that's that's what we try to do every single day. Just work hard and and earn wins. And and that's what that's literally I can't express enough. That's all we care about. We just want to keep. We just wanted to elevate this program when we got here five years ago. And that's always been our goal. And that's just the legacy we want to leave. Just a bunch of hardworking guys who who just wanted to win and and just help the, uh, bring this program to the next level. Because like um, just Ro Robbie just gave a lot of us were under recruited and gave us a lot. It gave us all an opportunity to play Division One baseball, and we feel that that we owe it to, to him and this school to to win a lot of games. So yeah, you know what's so neat, uh, Paul, is that you have um, players from all all around, you know, from different parts of the country, even here, of course, in New Jersey as well. But how great is that to see um, the chemistry on this team? All the guys, you know, buying into you know again uh, the same model. Just you know, I think we talked about it last year it was grit ball. Just, just talk about how, you know, important that is, you know, again, to the success, you know, of the program. It, it, it means everything. I mean, I think that was the reason last year why we had so much, so much success and why, again, this year we'll have so much success because we, we really, we really are a family. We have 37 guys that, that truly love and play for each other. Mm -hmm. um, not many, not many teams I've ever been a part of in my life, like truly are all pulling in one direction. And I think that that makes a team really special. Um, and, and yeah, it's really cool to have a bunch of guys from, from all around the country. I mean, the twins who are two of my best friends were from Texas who I, I, outside of baseball, I would have never had the opportunity to, to be around. So yeah. it, it's great. I live with them and, and, uh, and just, it, it's great. Just the, the chemistry that we have and we've built is, is something truly special. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful to be a part of the culture, uh, that we have here at NJIT. Yeah, not Great word you used, and that's what I went to, the culture, the environment, and the fact that, you know, I, I'm just wondering with uh, head coach Robbie McClellan, you know, some of the intangibles that Coach McClellan, you know, brings to the table, uh, uh, Paul, whether it's, you know, in-game situation or, you know, let's say practices, even, you know, off the field as, as, as well. Yeah. Uh, one thing about Robbie that I think he's probably the best that I've ever been around is he, he understands each and every one of his players individually and how to – how to really make them better and motivate them. He, he, he builds an individual relationship with everybody and he's a great people person. He brings great energy every single day. Um, and he's just, he's just grown massively as a head coach. I mean, when he was, when I was here as a freshman, he was the assistant and then kind of was thrust in that head coach role mm -hmm. and just really just hit the ground running and has done a great job. I mean, for, for a head coach year three to win a conference championship is, is almost unheard of. So he's done a great job. Just, just, building the culture here and um, just allowing his players to have success. He, he really knows how to relate to every one of his players. That's great. Uh, oh, I wanted to ask you that it's not easy as well that you guys don't have a home field. You know, you've played, I think, at, at TD Bank Ballpark before. Now, of course, at King University. I mean, that it's just, you know, incredible because I'm mean, using like most programs, they have their own home field. 
talk about the challenges of that and how you guys have been able to succeed, you know, in, in that fashion, uh, Paul. Yeah, so I've kind of seen the full spectrum of it my time uh, here. I know my, my freshman year we had Bears and Eagle Stadium, which was five minutes away from campus, so yeah. it truly was home field. And then sophomore year was was tough. We were, like you said, we were at TD Bank, we were at Sussex, uh, we played a series at Rutgers. So mm -hmm. that that was a that was a challenge that year because really not having a home. Um, but this last year and this year at Keene, it, it really feels like a home field. Like we we play our full fall season there. We practice there all during the week. Mm -hmm. um, so, so really, I, I don't see it as a challenge, Keen. Now it's it's mm -hmm. a 10, 15 minute bus ride. It's right down the road. We have a beautiful hitting facility on campus where we can just get a ton of work in. So, um, I, I I I enjoy I love playing at Keen, and I, I really feel like it's a home field for us now. I yeah. think everyone's comfortable there, um, and we've played enough there. Like I said, through the last three fall seasons we've had there had a full season last year. Um, so it really does feel like a home field now. Yeah. Hey, talk about also utilizing the WEC as, as well, uh, Paul. That that's uh, I, I know that has played an important role as well in terms of talk about strength and conditioning. You know, Coach Bobby Fisk as well. Yeah, no, you can't really uh, <laughs> you can't really put a value on how how important the WEC is to yeah. our program. Like you said, um, the 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 work that we we're able to get in in the turf room, in the weight room, in the training room is just. Is, is just is what a what's able to allow us to, to have success because our, our guys really work really work hard and and having a facility like that it's it's not hard to get in there and, and put your work in it's 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 state of the art it's we feel like it's one of the best in the country so it's yeah. if you're not able to get your work in there and are inspired aren't inspired then you're probably not going to want to get your work in anywhere so it makes it makes it really easy um uh just just to put in a lot of work that's true yeah hey, I think another uh, critical component is the outstanding structure you have with the administration, with athletics, you know, you know, athletic director, Lenny Kaplan, just talk about that, Dr. Joel Bloom. I mean, I think it's, you know, you have so many people, again, with a vast amount of experience and that I think, again, lends so much, you know, to, again, you know, the, the success of the program as well, uh, Paul. Yeah, no, they, they do, they do an unbelievable job just, just supporting us, um, laying a foundation for whatever we need and, and another person who who works in administration is Andrew Schwartz, and he just does an unbelievable mm -hmm. job just um, supporting our, our he's he's uh, supports our baseball program awesome, and just uh, just really gets it done for us. So so it's it's he works a lot behind the scenes uh, doing stuff for us, but but he does he does a great job, and a lot of our success is is because of the way that he sets the foundation. Yeah, no, definitely. Let's have a couple more. Uh, well, you know, when I was thinking about that, you know, again that. You know, magical run last year. The fact that, you know, you gained a lot of followers, a lot of supporters, you know, not only here in New Jersey, but throughout the country. And to put NGIT as far as the baseball program, because we always talk about Rutgers, Seton Hall, Ryder, Princeton, yeah. but to have NGIT there front and center. I mean, what, what I mean, I know that it said you're concentrating on 2022, 20, uh, but just mm -hmm. to think of the impact you had, uh, on people and just, you know, in terms of, you know, people who love uh, the game of baseball, I just had to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, no, it, it was, it was great to finally, like, we felt like it was kind of finally getting the respect that we deserved. Um, Cause we really felt like we, we had a really good program for, for a long time since, mm -hmm. since I've been here as a freshman, I know we, we had a great season that year, made, made the conference tournament and one of the, 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 t the toughest conferences in the country in the ace on that year, beat a bunch of ranked teams and, and kind of no one was talking about it. So just last year, like you said, to get on that national stage and, and kind of just cement ourselves as as one of the top programs in New Jersey was was really important to us and and uh, it meant a lot. Hey, as in terms of playing baseball, four year starter at, at Princeton Day School, so I had to ask you, you know, about your high school days. You know, I said uh, I think a three time first team, you know, New Jersey prep honor. You earned a lot of accolades, a lot of honors while playing there. Uh, talk about your time. How how special you know those days were. You know playing high school baseball there. Oh, it was it was some of the most fun I've ever had. Uh, so playing baseball. Um, uh, my brother was I played with my brother for three years. He was he now plays at Xavier. Yeah. Um. So so I can't put into words how how special that was just to to be with him. Um. And my uncle uh, Brian Dudek was also my coach in high school. So that that was he's one of my biggest role models and mentors. So mm -hmm. just th those experiences are some that I'll just, I'll have forever and just cherish totally. Just want to say, you know, the support you received, you talked about your family, but especially your parents as well, uh, Paul. Yeah, no, my, my, my parents have, have just allowed me to do, have all any success that I've ever had is because of them. They've, 
I can't put into words how, how incredible they are and the sacrifice that they made for myself and my two other brothers. And yeah. they just made a path to success really easy for us. And, and I couldn't be, I don't, I think I have the best parents in the world. So that's wonderful. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I, you've been playing baseball for so long. I, I'm wondering, you know, for you, um, you know, what, uh, what makes it so special? I mean, there's gotta be, you know, a couple of things that really stand out, whether, you know, again, you're, you're, uh, you know, uh, playing the game, you know, said, uh, or even maybe it's off the field practice. I, I just had to ask you something that really, you know, comes to your mind, you know, first and foremost, Paul. Yeah, uh, uh, that's it's tough. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> two, two things that um, just just competing. I, I love, I'm extremely competitive um, in, in everything I do. If you ask my roommates, whatever, <laughs> they, they tell you that. So obviously just to get there out there and compete, I, I I love nothing more than winning baseball games. And then uh, really just the, the thing I cherish probably the most is just the relationships that I've been able to build through, through the game of baseball. I've met um, some of my best friends for life, uh, some of my biggest mentors, um, and and just just memories that I'll have forever. And and I'm very thankful for for baseball and that and the, the doors opened up for me in, in that way because, I've, I've like I said, I've met some of the best people in the entire world just, yeah. just because of this game. No, definitely. Hey, it's not easy, you know. You know, the rest of the team being a student athlete at NJIT. I mean, with the with the demands, with the rigors, you know, said uh, that it carries. I'm wondering how, for you, Paul, you've been able to to balance that out between academics and athletics. Yeah, no, it's just it's it's it's. I, I felt like I had a good preparation at, uh, in high school at, at PDS, and it, as long as you just met your budget, your time well, and and uh, don't don't dilly dally too much. It's 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 not it's not too difficult. And I've had a bunch of good professors here at school, a bunch of great academic advisors. So they they've made a they've made it pretty pretty easy to do that. As well as older guys when I was younger to kind of show me how show me the ropes. So yeah, yeah. Now that's a great point you made because now I'm sure fifth year, you know, you can pass down your knowledge now to uh, those underclassmen, Paul. <laughs> exactly. It's all it's all about passing it down. Yeah. That's what it's all about, and, and building from there. Definitely. Hey, I, a final two, uh, uh, Paul, and I think you're in a great spot. The first question is um, uh, what your advice, is, again, is, is for younger teammates, athletes, you know, especially kids out there who may be watching this, uh, you know, what uh, your message is to them in terms of, you know, playing sports and then, of course, you know, with academics as well. My my, my biggest method, mes message would be just to work hard every day. I feel like um, – I wasn't always the the most talented, but I always felt like I, I worked worked the hardest. I felt like I was the hardest worker in the room, and that's just that's just what was instilled into me by by my my cousins and my role models when I was growing up. Just just to be the hardest worker. So if I were to give anyone any advice, a young athlete, it would just be to wake up every day and just just really put in the work and, and feel like you're the hardest worker in the room, and that's going to take you further than than probably your talent ever will. So it's great. Okay, uh, new segment I've introduced in my interviews, especially with NJIT athletes, uh, uh, is that uh, what your message is, uh, Paul, for Highlander uh, you know, Nation, not only here locally, but nationally, especially with the home opener coming up uh, this Friday uh, against the University of Hartford at Keene University, uh, with first pitch set at 7.30 p.m. Um, your message also for the 2022 season as we move forward here. The floor is yours, Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My message is is the we're ready to go. We're ready to we're ready to make another run at it. And and there's never been a team in the history of this school that's been more has worked harder and has been more prepared for to to repeat as champions as of the America East than we have. We we put an unbelievable amount of work this fall and spring and and we're just gonna rely on that and we're gonna play really confident and uh and we're just gonna look to do the exact same thing we did last year and take it even further. So Sounds good. Hey, Paul, it's just an incredible honor and privilege being able to interview you again. I, I said wishing you and the rest of the team again all the best, not only with the home opener versus uh, the University of Hartford on Friday night and uh, the rest of uh, the American East Conference play. No, th thank you very much. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.